Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So, across the last year I've made lots of videos talking about the strengths and weaknesses of different types of sword. And um, something that I have been accused of is not uh, pegging my opinions to a tree uh, so much, and I'm maybe sometimes quite diplomatic about, um, about talking about the strengths and weaknesses of different things and not necessarily saying which I think is best. Okay, So this is a video where I'm actually going to say for once what I think is best and why. And I'm going to keep it fairly brief and the discussion that comes out of this video will hopefully lead to other videos in the future. So I'm not going to explain myself too much in this video. Also it would be too long because I'm going to talk about a variety of different swords. I'm going to try and keep it concise and, uh, and so I'll go straight to the swords. Okay? So first off, imagine we're in a scenario where it's an arena fight. I don't know what type of sword my opponent is going to have, but I know they're going to have a type of sword sword or knife, an edged weapon, okay, and it's not going to be uh, longer than, uh, let's say, longer than a long sword, okay, it's not going to be a massive two-handed sword, it's not going to be a pole weapon, it's not going to be a halberd or anything like that, it's going to be long sword length or less, and they're only allowed one weapon, okay, equally it's an arena fight, so nobody else is involved, it's not a melee, um, there are not going to be other weapons lying around on the ground, um, nobody else is going to get involved, nobody's going to attack me from behind or gang up on me or anything like that. It's one on one fight, it's unarmoured, so there's no armour involved. Uh, we can, we're only allowed one edged weapon each, okay? And that weapon has to be long sword length or less. So, let's start off uh, strengths and weaknesses, which I think are best. So, uh, do I think that uh, a weapon like a cookery? or a, a balisong, or a machete, or this type of thing, would be good. Uh, no, okay? Why? Too short. Okay, generally speaking, this is, this is an unarmoured fight. Most of these weapons are, spend a lot of their time in the sheath, um, so they're used by people who use predominantly missile weapons or something else. They are not supposed to go up against things like longswords. Okay? If you try and fight someone using a, a longsword, or a rapier, using a a machete or a bowie knife or a cookery, nine times out of ten, assuming you're both about equal, assuming I'm not like some master martial artist and the other guy is a complete noob, okay, you are going to come off really badly if you try and use a really short weapon against someone who's using a sword length weapon. Okay, so too short, rubbish reach, I can't defend my legs properly. If you're fighting someone who's got a very short weapon, take their legs apart, take their hands apart, they'll be rubbish at defending themselves. Go for their extremities. Don't go for their core targets first. Target their extremities, disable them. There's not much they can do about it, okay? Right, next up, what about a one-handed medieval sword? Pretty good, okay? I think you've got a good amount of length. It's nicely balanced. You've got good cutting power, thrusting power. It's a good blade. The weakness of the medieval sword, what lets it down in this fight, Bearing in mind my opponent could have any weapon uh, below the length of, or from longsword length and below, is that my hands and forearm are very vulnerable. Okay? I'm not allowed to use a shield, I'm not allowed to use a buckler in this fight. If I've only got one sword, okay, my big risk with this sword is going to be my hand. However, it's still a pretty good choice, and if I, if I was doing this for real, this, I wouldn't, if I was forced to fight with this, I wouldn't feel too disappointed. Okay, it's a good sword, can cut well, thrust well, it's got good reach, got good speed, and so on and so, on and so forth. Next up, what do we think about our old friend, the katana? Okay, folded 50 zillion times and can cut through a tank, uh, as of course we know, but would I pick it in this fight? No, I wouldn't. Okay, why? Because remember, we know we're going against opponents who've got a weapon of a long sword or rapier length or less. Okay, the katana is very short uh, in the blade, assuming it's a typical type of katana. If we're talking about maybe something a bit more like a, a nodashi or something like that, um, or a, just a bigger katana tashi with a longer blade on it, maybe because it's a kind of it's essentially it's a long sword then. My uh, the katana can thrust pretty well, it can cut excellently, very good cutting weapon. My main reservations about it, apart from the length, would be the lack of hand protection. Okay, we've got very, very poor hand protection on the katana, it's really just a disc, and you've got a lot of handle and a lot of fingers and meat attached on the back end of your weapon there. 
that's a lot of you for the opponent to be able to hit. And especially with a short blade, you haven't got much blade in front of it either. So, a katana would be a fairly, again, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be really upset if I was forced to use the katana. It, um, it certainly is, in offence, a very effective weapon. It can cut excellently, it can thrust pretty well as well. I would want more length on the blade, I would want longsword length, or the maximum length I could get on it, in the rules of this competition, or, or fight to the death. And if I could get some kind of handguard, that would be awesome. Because that Suba is really rubbish as a handguard, it's not much there at all. I'd much rather have a medieval cross guard than that. Okay, so that's something else to think about. So maybe we'll go to, okay, the longsword. Well, I would personally rather have the longsword than the katana. I'll be honest, this type of pointy longsword doesn't cut as well as a katana. Okay, but we're fighting an unarmoured opponent. We're not, I don't need to cut through a buffalo here or chop an elephant's trunk off. All I need to do is disable or kill an opponent who's fighting me, a human. Humans are fairly frail actually and certainly this longsword is, can easily lop bits off people. Um, so whilst the katana might be able to, and this is obviously debatable, but might be able to outcut this type of longsword, um, I would rather have the extra length and that nice point on this longsword uh, rather than the katana. And you know what? I'd certainly rather have that crossguard. Again, it's obviously equal to the, to the medieval one-handed sword I showed. It is only a crossguard. Um, so it's not fantastic hand protection, but you do have a whacking great blade on it, and you've got a lot of leverage with the two hands, just as you do with the katana, of course. I would pick this over the katana if I could, mostly for the reach. Okay? Uh, it can move as fast as a katana, it can thrust further away than a katana, it can cut further away than a katana, it's got a longer blade. It maybe doesn't do as much damage with the cut as a katana would do, or maybe it, it's so marginal it wouldn't do a lot less, and certainly does enough to take down an unarmoured opponent. And it's got a better handguard than the katana. And you know what? The hilt is about the same length, so the leverage force is about the same. Um, yeah, so there we go. I, I would pick the longsword over the katana. However, I still don't think this would be my first choice. So, what about going to one-handed swords which have enclosed guards? Well, as you guys know if you watch this channel, I am a fan of, you know, on the left here, on my left as it were, your, your right, I think, um, this is a, a backsword, a, a early English Tudor um, style backsword with a, with a basket hilt, and this side we've got a 19th century sabre with a sabre hilt. These guards are going to protect both your hand and because of angulation, if you look down my arm there, protect my forearm as well, much better than the medieval cross guard. And indeed, much, much better than the Japanese suba. Okay? So these guards are going to protect my sword arm and my sword hand. And my sword arm and sword hand are really important because they hold my weapon. They protect my life. They defend me. They attack and take the life from my opponent. Okay? So my hand and sword arm are really important parts of my body to be safe. And what these types of weapons do is they give you a liberty of attacking and a confidence in defence. You know that uh, even if you mess up your parry a bit, you're not going to lose fingers, you're not going to get your hand disabled because the, ha because the guard is there to protect you. And equally when you're attacking, you don't have to worry about throwing that hand out in front of you as you attack and your opponent hitting it because they can't. They've got to deal with your blade. They can't just hit you in the hand because the, the guard is in the way protecting your hand. So these are very, very high up my preference list. For me, they're above the longsword. Okay? Next up, our old friend, and this is a wobbly example. I wish I had a better one. The rapier. So the rapier, what does the rapier have? Well, it's a specialised weapon. It has the hand protection of the basket hilt or the sabre there. And in fact, you could even say even more hand protection with this one. It's a particularly big hilt. But it has even longer reach. Um, but what it's done is it's sacrificed its cutting ability. It's essentially a specialised thrusting weapon. But it has reach that, if we put it next to the, the longsword here, look at that. It's even longer than the longsword. Okay, this has a 43-inch blade. Now you could use a longsword with a 43-inch blade. Um, absolutely. Um, but the rapier is going to be much more nimble in the thrust. Uh, the longsword is going to have more leverage in the bind. It's obviously the longsword can cut. 
the rapier can cut, but it's much, much more feeble cuts. Uh, they're really only disabling or worrying cuts. They're not, they're not life-taking cuts unless you hit an artery, if, you know, if you're lucky. But generally speaking, the rapier is specialised for the thrust. Now, I personally, in this arena one-on-one -on -one fight that we're looking at, I think it's important to say that all swords are not that different, okay? The difference between a katana and a medieval arming sword is not as big as the difference between a katana and a spear, okay? The, the uh, disparity between any type of sword and a polearm, or any type of sword and a dagger, or any type of sword and, let's say, a warhammer, is a much bigger difference than any type of sword and another type of sword, assuming that that type of sword is not ridiculously long or ridiculously short. <coughs> they are all medium length cut and thrust weapons. Even the rapier, which is specialised for the thrust, can still cut to some extent. All of those swords I've just shown, from the cookery right the way through to the rapier, are all able to, to both cut and thrust at medium range. Okay? They're not super close range weapons, they're not uh, you know, a knife, and they're not super long range weapons like a halberd or a partisan or a spear. They're all medium range cut and thrust weapons, so they're not that different. But, in, and this is where, we, <laughs> this is where I, uh, I, I pin my, my own opinions to the, to the tree, uh, and feel free to knock them down. What would I pick? My first choice, <coughs> believe it or not, despite my own personal preferences for the sabre and the backsword and weapons like this, my first choice for the one-on-one -on -one fight in the arena against life, life or death, against one opponent, nobody else gets involved, unarmoured, is the rapier. Okay? I think the rapier has an advantage over pretty much, has a, not a huge, but has a slight advantage over pretty much all medium length swords, okay? So discountings of eye handers and so on and so forth. Um, I think, and, and I don't think we should be that surprised by this, because I think the rapier is a specialised weapon for, guess what? The duel, okay? Yes, rapiers were occasionally ca carried in war, however, many people who carried rapiers in civilian life didn't carry rapiers in war, they carried broadswords, backswords, um, uh, skivoners and uh, falchions and other types of sword in battle. Okay? Generally speaking, the rapier is a weapon that grew up for civilian dueling. In other words, for one unarmoured man to um, kill another unarmoured man in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Okay? They are not good melee weapons, they're very poor melee weapons. They're not very good at cutting, they're not very good against armour. They're not particularly good against other types of battlefield weapons like halberds or, or uh, pole axes or, or pikes. Okay? They, are, they are really specialised for the one-on-one -on -one fight. And so we shouldn't be that surprised, maybe, that they are the most advantageous sword to pick for a one-on-one -on -one fight. And bear in mind that rapiers were very popular for a long period of history, really from the middle of the 16th century right the way through and evolved into the small sword obviously eventually, but right the way through the 17th century, for the one-on-one -on -one duel. Okay? They were the specialised dueling sword for the one-on-one -on -one fight. Um, and um, yeah, so there we go. My, if I had to fight tomorrow, this kind of fight, would I pick the rapier? I think probably yes. Um, my personal favourite weapon, as most of you guys have probably guessed by now if I haven't said it explicitly before, is the sabre. I do practice sabre against rapier on a semi-regular basis. Why? Not because I think sabre is better than rapier, because I'm trying to teach myself to deal with rapierists um, with my sabre. And that's because I love my sabre. I want to be better with my sabre. And rather than just being good with my sabre against other people with their sabres, I want to be able to use my sabre against any other weapon. So I go sabre against longsword, sabre against sword and buckler, sabre against spear, sabre against bayonet, and sabre against rapier. And I struggle. And I'm not a bad fencer. I've over the years done fairly well in some competitions, and I think I'm, I think I'm generally, even by people maybe who don't like, don't like me, I'm generally regarded as a reasonable fencer. And rapiers are difficult to deal with, and it doesn't matter whether you use a longsword, or a katana, or a sword and buckler, or a, a sabre. It is difficult to face rapiers. They have such a reach advantage. 
and being so specialised for the thrust, having the point of balance back near the hilt, means they can disengage and move that point around. They can stab you in the shin and then stab you in the face quicker than you can uh, parry quite often. They're very quick in the point and have such a huge reach. And they've got a huge amount of uh, hand protection and they're pretty good in defence as well because they are actually quite heavy weapons. They're, they're about three pounds. They're heavier than most sabres are um, and they're about the same weight as a medieval arming sword in fact. Um, so there we go. I think rapiers are pretty much king of one-on-one -on -one sword fighting. But that doesn't necessarily make me want to be a rapierist. It makes me want to learn how to beat rapierists. Okay? <laughs> Cheers.